It's like a skateboard ramp sort of thing. I guess they used to call it a half pipe back in the day. And you've got one mass here, one mass here. Uh, what are your two masses? Uh, my mass one is 1.95. Is that the left one? Yes. Okay, so 1.95 kilograms. What's this one? 3.9. Point nine kilograms. And how high off the ground are they? 5.2. They're both the same height. So now, is there friction on this problem? Uh, it doesn't say so. Okay. So unless it tell, I mean, if it if it tells you specifically the coefficient of friction is, then you know there's friction. But if it doesn't say anything, no friction. Okay. So to start with, this is a a real simple energy problem, right? This mass is going to slide down and it wants to know how fast it's going at the bottom. So that's just the same thing we've been doing. Energy initial equals energy final minus work not conserved. So uh, let's do that. Energy initial equals energy final minus work not conserved. And let's just do this for mass one. We'll do mass two in a minute. Okay. So what kind of energy does it have at the start? Potential energy. Yes. So to start with, it has potential energy. And then sometime later, it's going to slide down the incline and end up down here somewhere. And it's going to be moving this way. OK, so what kind of energy does it have here? Kinetic. Kinetic energy. Notice I drew this little dashed line here. That's I'm calling that the ground. So by, by doing that, we're saying this is on the ground here. The best place to put the ground is always at the lowest point of your object. And how much friction do we have? Zero. Yeah, so this piece goes away. because Nobody's pushing on it, and there's no friction. And so we just say MGH. one half mv squared. And divide both sides by m. Sum for v. So uh, see, I multiply both sides by 2. So that'll cancel out the half over there. So now I'll have 2GH equals V squared. Now I can just take square root of both sides. And that'll tell me final speed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Have you already gotten that far? Okay, so now that's the speed of mass 1 at the bottom. Well, what are we going to do to find the speed of mass 2 at the bottom? Use the same equation. Yeah, we're going to, and does mass even make a difference here? No. Look, mass cancels out, so it doesn't matter. So this is the speed of mass 1, and guess what? It's the speed of mass 2 as well. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so this one slides down and it's going that way. This one slides down and it's going the other way. Okay, so this is a multi step problem, and that's step one. Step one is they slide down. And this is how you're going to find that speed right before they run into each other.
Step two is, what do you think? When they collide? Yeah, step two is the collision. They're going to smash into each other here, and we got to deal with that part now. So this was, I'll write this, I'll call this uh, step one up here. And now we'll do step two. Step two is the collision. So in any collision, in all collisions, momentum is conserved. In elastic collisions, momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved. So what kind of collision is this? Elastic or inelastic? Elastic? Yeah, how do you know that? They bounce off? Yep, so they hit and bounce, so that makes it elastic. So this is an, this is an elastic collision. They're going to hit and bounce. So what we're going to do here is we're going to need to use two equations. We're going to need to use conservation momentum and we're going to need to use conservation of energy, kinetic energy specifically. Um, kinetic energy is tricky, so let's start with momentum. And that's kind of the approach you always want to take. Always start with momentum because it's the easy one. If you can get it done with that, then you're done and you did it the easy way. Kinetic energy is going to be harder and we'd rather not go there if we don't have to. Okay? So uh, let's start with conservation of momentum. So we're going to start with um, momentum initial equals momentum final. P stands for momentum. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. Uh, so before the collision, what has momentum? Both masses. Yeah, they both have momentum. So it's going to be mass 1 times velocity 1 plus mass 2 times velocity 2. Now, what do you know about these two velocities? They're the same. Yeah, they're the same thing. We just did it over here. Except for one catch. Notice the arrows here. They're opposite. So one of them's negative. Which one? Mass 2 is velocity. Yeah. This one is the negative one because it's going to the left. So this Looks like that. And uh, on WebAssign, when for part A, when you're asked to fill in the velocity one and velocity two, don't forget that little negative sign for velocity two. It's going to the left. Okay. Okay. Now, after the collision, so that was this is momentum initial right here. Okay. Now, after the collision, what's going to have momentum? Neither one of them? Or no, it would, momentum would be conserved? Well, momentum is conserved, yes. But are they both moving, or one moving, or neither moving? Neither one of them will be moving. What are they going to do? Neither one of them will move. Sorry, I'm distracted, but uh, I, <laughs> um, and yeah, they're going to bounce off each other and they're going to go in opposite directions. So this is, this is an elastic collision when they, when they hit and bounce. So that means we get a deal, that means after the collision it's going to be M1 times V1 final plus M2 times V2 final. And here's the catch. We don't know which way either one of these are going to go. It might be that they come in and smash and bounce off of each other and both go back the way they came. Or it might be that one is so much heavier that it pushes the other one and they both are going the same direction or it might be they're going the same direction the other way. It's a mess. So I'm going to leave both of these as positive and let the math tell me if I'm wrong. Okay? So. So notice, we've got two unknowns here. This one 
and this one. And since we have two unknowns, that means we need, we need another equation. So guess what we're going to have to go now? The energy one. Yeah, we're going to have to use conservation of kinetic energy, which we were hoping to avoid, but alas, we're stuck with it. Now, on your equation sheet, I have a shortcut for you. It only works in a very specific case. It only works in one-dimensional collisions. In other words, it, if, you, if you were playing billiards and the cue ball comes in and they collide and go off in different directions, you can't use this shortcut. But if they collide and they go in the same direction, like in this case, then you can use the shortcut. Does that make sense? O only one-dimensional collisions can you use the kinetic energy shortcut. Okay? So, and you're going to have to look on the equation sheet because I don't remember the shortcut off. It's, it's like V1 initial minus V2 initial equals V2 final minus V2 initial or something. I don't know. Look it up. Uh, V1 initial minus V2 initial equals negative, and then parentheses, V1 final minus V2 final. Okay. There we go. So there's our second equation. Because you know both of these, right? And here's the same two unknowns that we have over here. So now it's just an algebra problem because you now have two, equa two equations and two unknowns. Okay, so how are you doing so far? Does all this kind of make sense? So far. Okay. Um, Notice this is V1 initial minus V2 initial. Now, which one of these was negative? The V2. Yeah. So we're going to do V1 initial minus a negative V2 initial, which is going to end up adding these two here. Okay? So, uh,. <coughs> We, without, okay, so I think we've pretty much got this problem nailed out. Let me show you the third step, and we'll come back and do algebra in a minute if you want, but let, let me show you the third step. Because part C asks, how high do they go after the collision? So here's what this does for us. These two equations, this one and this one, those two equations are going to tell us how fast they're going to move after the collision. They might be, they might be moving in opposite directions. Let's, let's say they are. If they're moving in opposite directions, one's going to go back up this way, the other's going to go back up that way. And so the next question is asking, part C is asking, how high up does each one go? Okay, does that make sense? And to figure that out, you're going to do this exact same process here again like we did for step one. So step three and step one are exactly identical. It's just step three is the reverse order. Instead of starting with potential energy and ending up with kinetic energy, you start with kinetic energy and end with potential energy. Okay. But let's go back to this step. Do you want to wrestle with algebra? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Let's go back to step one here, and I don't really care to get these numbers, but from this, I want to point out that, let's just call this uh, V final for the slide, is this equation here. From that, we can get V initial for the collision,
because that's the same thing, right? Whatever it ends with during the slide is what it starts with for the collision. And so, um, for one, that's positive V final slide. And for two of the collision, that's negative V final slide. Right? We already said this, I'm just kind of drawing it out. Does that make sense? Okay. And now, when we plug those in, here and here, we're going to get uh, V final slide minus negative V final slide equals, um, and I'm going to go ahead and send this negative sign in here. So it's going to be made, it's going to be positive V2F minus V1. <coughs> now notice, minus negative becomes positive. And it's the same thing. So this becomes, is this getting off the board if I write one more line down here? Yep. No. You guys see that? Okay. So this will be 2 V final slide equals V 2 F minus V 1 F. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. One more step down here. I'm going to just add that V V1 final to the other side. So I get V2 final is equal to 2 V final of the slide. Um, plus V1 final. Remember it's this V final and V1 final that we're trying to get to. Don't get the slide final mixed up with the collision final. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to take, since this whole equation here is V2F, I'm going to take it and plug the whole thing in right there. So now we're just solving a system of two equations here. That's all we're doing. So the physics has already been done, we're just doing algebra. So, uh, these two numbers are the same thing. Um, in fact, I'm going to write that out here. This will be um, the final of the slide. And of course, that's this one as well. So, because both of these have that same piece in there, I can pull that piece right out. So that I've got um, V final slide times M1 minus M2. See how this line came from this line? Why is it M1 minus M2? Because that negative sign, it stays with the M2. Okay. And now, on the right side, I'm going to have M1 times V1 final. I just carried that down as it is. And uh, this one here, I'm going to write plus M2 times all of this. Because that's what we're going to put in there for that. Okay. So I'm going to write
bracket parentheses to the final slide plus v1 final. Now I'm going to clear out some board space up here, but this is the equation that we're at right now. Does everybody see how we got here? Yes. Okay. So let me clear out some board space. Um, So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to distribute this M2. I'm going to take the M2 and put it in here and here. Okay, so I'll just rewrite the whole thing, but I'll distribute that M2. <clears throat> so my right side I'm going to leave alone. So I'm going to have a V final slide times M1 minus M2 is equal to M1 times V1 final plus uh, 2 M2 V final slide plus M2 times V1 final. Okay. See we what can't I see that. Oh, is it too low or too high? Too high. Okay, I can see it now. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Now, notice I want this piece here. And this piece here, they both have that V1 final that we're trying to get to in it. And this, well, we know everything in there, right? We know M2 and we know the final speed of the slide. So we're just going to subtract this piece over here with the rest of that. So we're going to, those two green terms will be left on the left, on the right side, but this piece we're going to subtract over. So we're going to have V final slide M1 minus M2 minus 2M2 <coughs> times V final slide equals M1 V1 final plus M2 times V1 final. Okay. So now we're going to do uh, two uh, undistributions, two factorings. We're going to pull out this V final slide out of this term and this term. And we're going to pull out the V1 final out of this term and this term. So we're going to do it both, both sides in the same step. So we're going to do V final slide times M1 minus M2 minus 2m2 equals v1 final times m1 plus m2. And now, last step. Divide both sides by m1 plus m2. goes away over here, and that tells us V1 final. And then, if I hadn't erased the board, there was an equation right down here. It was right down here, and it said V2 final is equal to blah, 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 V1 final. So there you go. I know V1 
V1 and V2 final, which is the speed after the collision. 